bringing together. Thank you. Um, yeah. Did I interrupt you? No, no, that's perfect. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction. Um, so you'll see that I'm sharing my screen. I just want to give you an, a look at the agenda, what I have planned today. Um, so we are doing the welcome and in introductions. We introduced our guest speaker and um, we're going to do an inclusion activity in just a second. I promise it won't be that painful. Um, and then today's outcomes are to know what Giving Tuesday is and to be excited about radical generosity. And number two, to have information about our local campaign, Give 906 and how to be involved. And number three, to be sparked and excited and influenced with new ideas. Um, and then what, like, what are we doing is today we're defining and explaining a lot of different things like Giving Tuesday. What is that organization? What is the movement of Giving Tuesday? What is distributive leadership, which is the structure in which Giving Tuesday operates and defining and explaining Give 906. And why, why do we want to do this? Like we want to do this because we want to define radical generosity and we want radical generosity to be throughout our communities to make a difference. And then the how is to register and participate in Give 906. Um, like asking you guys, like, do you have plans for Giving Tuesday and what are those? And then three, I think this is like the famous like Giving Tuesday leaders saying like, if you have nothing planned, just do something. Like even if it's like social media, throwing some posts out, throwing your giving page up, um, you know, just do something. And then we'll have a Q&A time. Does anyone have any questions? Does everyone understand like where we're headed throughout the next hour or so? All right, I lost you guys for a second, you disappeared, but we're back. Um, sorry for the pause, but anyway, so that's where we're headed and that's what we're going to do. And so our inclusion activity is what is like, who are you first of all, can you tell us your name and what organization you're with? And then what is your favorite movie, TV show, or book? Who would like to start? I can go ahead and start. I'm Terry Frankenstein here on the uh, behalf on behalf of the Northern Great Lakes Synod. Bishop Finnegan had emailed me a couple of hours ago and asked me to attend this meeting. <laughs> Wonderful. So is it a thing? Like, am I supposed to be off video? No, I prefer people. I mean, Victoria might be on and off because she has some unstable internet, but I prefer people to be seen, but I don't want to pressure anybody. So I appreciate you being seen. It's so much easier to engage with people. Um, so, um, you're wondering about my favorite TV show or yeah. book. Or, I don't know. Right now, um, I'm reading a lot about um, the book of nature, echo theology, echo spirituality, those sorts of things. I can't really say there's a favorite book. There are just a lot of them. Awesome. Thank you for sharing and welcome. Thanks. Anybody want to go next? Sure. I'll go next. Oh, go ahead, Amy. I'm not going. Oh. You go, go first. And occasionally I may turn my camera off as well. I've been having internet issues, but I'm Amy Quinn. I'm the CEO of Grow and Lead. So we're so happy that you all joined us and my favorite movie is the BBC version of Pride and Prejudice because it really, it follows the book fairly closely and it's in depth and I just, and I like Colin Firth, but I'm a, I'm a big Pride and Prejudice nut. I didn't know that about you, Amy. Thanks for sharing. 
All right. Carrie, do you want to go? Sure. Thank you. Um, this is fun because I remember I met Terry uh, a few years back and um, I'm my day job is I'm faculty at Michigan Tech. So I believe I had your daughter many years ago <laughs> in our master's program. So, um, but I'm Carrie Henquinet and um, I'm representing Right Start UP, which is a nonprofit in Hancock, Michigan. Um, we have not done Giving Tuesday, but we have acquired a huge building um, this year and we have lots of projects. So I'm here to learn about that. Um, and I'm going to say my favorite movie is the um, version of Little Women with Winona Ryder that I, I don't know, I think it came out in the 90s. Um, but I do love that Pride and Prejudice one too. That's going to be right up there in the top few. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. I love that green. I love, that's my favorite book. Green Gables. Yeah, Green Gables. All right. Would anybody else like to go? I know there's some people who might be multitasking with work tasks, but we're just sharing who we are and what our favorite book, movie, or TV show is. All right. I'm going to keep moving then. I already shared what our outcomes are and of today's meeting and training. And those are in the notes or in the agenda that I put in the com in the little comment area. So if you want to relook at that and follow along, please do so. Um, and then I'm going to hand it back over to Vic. Is she on here? Yeah, there I'm she back. is. I, I think found. hopefully everyone can hear me again. I'm sorry. <laughs> Although I live in the UP, I am one of you all. I live in Marquette, originally from Sault Ste. Marie. I'm actually in Wichita, Kansas this right now. Um, and the Wichita, Kansas Marriott Wi-Fi is not great. So um, I've tethered to my phone. Hopefully this keeps working. Um, but the National Conference, Conference for Growing Community Foundations um, happens in Wichita every year this week. Um, and so I'm here Um doing a panel with some of our community foundation led activations. So apologies if I freeze up and um, drop off momentarily, I will switch to another network and try again. <laughs> and I'll fill in where I can. <laughs> awesome. Um, so I think let's start with radical generosity. Hey, Taylor. Yeah. Um, has anyone, has anyone heard the phrase radical generosity before? A couple of people. Love it. Love it. Um, so Giving Tuesday, we say we're all about unleashing radical generosity. And that is um, the concept that no one should suffer, that we all have an opportunity to give to help alleviating alleviate suffering in the world. Um, now, you can take that word suffering and, and kind of... Um, look at it through a variety of lenses through the nonprofit sector, right? It could be lack of food. It could be um, lack of cultural opportunities. It could be um, unsafe communities. Like there are all a whole bunch of ways that nonprofits address suffering um, and, and do it through generosity. One of the things that we talk a lot about is that a lot of times generosity um, equals financial giving. And we don't believe that. We believe in the five ways of giving. Um, so generosity is giving time, giving items, giving money, giving testimony, um, and giving talent. So there are a variety of ways that people can be generous. And um, when I first was introduced to Giving Tuesday, like many in the sector, I was like, oh yeah, this is a, a, the biggest day of fundraising. Love it. Here for it. Let's raise all the money um, for all of the nonprofits. And my worldview has really changed around that it's not that Giving Tuesday exists as a day to raise money for nonprofits. It's Giving Tuesday is a day to introduce people who don't know how to be generous to generosity. Um, it is the only day outside of December 30th and 31st that people are actively looking for ways to be generous globally. Um, obviously, end of the year, people are looking to be generous financially um, if they need some tax to take advantage of tax incentives. Um, but Giving Tuesday is a little different in that it's the everyday giver that is trying to figure out how they can get involved and get engaged in their communities. Um, so this idea of radical generosity is deployed through what we're calling distributed leadership. And that is that um, we all have power in our communities. At the intermediary level, Taylor and Amy um, have power 
you as grassroots nonprofits have power um, and we should all be sharing that power. It shouldn't be Giving Tuesday saying, I'm going to come to the Upper Peninsula and I'm going to tell you how to do Giving Tuesday. And then I'm going to come to Wichita, Kansas and tell you how to do Giving Tuesday. And then I'm going to go down to Amarillo, Texas and tell you how to do Giving Tuesday. Um, you all know the needs of your communities and you should be the ones that figure out what does Give 906 look like? What are we doing for Give 906? What does the Panhandle Gives look like? What does um, Peabody, Kansas Giving Tuesday look like? Because each community has their own thing that needs to be addressed. Um, and when there is collectivism and a moment where people are asked to be generous, it kind of creates this ripple effect of, I did something good for my community and I talked about it. And someone else felt inspired and they did something for the community and talked about it. And that inspired a third person. And we see that like Giving Tuesday to Taylor and Amy, to all of you nonprofits, to all of your networks, to their, their networks, it's just this explosive movement of more and more people getting involved. So last year it was 34 million people in the US participated. Um, 18 million gave funds, 14 million gave voice. Um, which is testimony and ties. Um, 11 million gave items and 10 million gave or volunteered. Um, so when you add that number together, it adds up to more than 34 million, right? Um, and that's because people actually give in multiple ways on Giving Tuesday. They might make a $25 donation to a nonprofit and um, it's the UP, so I can talk about it. They might also bring cans to the TV6 Canathon, and like everyone knows what that is, right? Um, so it's it's an opportunity for people to not just give financially, but to find the way that is most inspiring to them and the things that they care about the most and get engaged in that thing. Um, so looking at kind of what your organization needs, obviously. There's financial need, but what other needs might you be able to ask people to get involved with on Giving Tuesday um, or year round? Thinking about if you do bring in a new donor on Giving Tuesday, how are you going to make sure they're a donor that is um, still a donor in the next year? And the wildest stat I just heard, this one came out like last week. It was a candidate and Giving Tuesday study. Um, 12 percent of reoccurring donors start on Giving Tuesday. So those ones that are giving monthly, 12% of monthly or quarterly or weekly givers made their first gift last year on Giving Tuesday. So having thinking about like, how are you asking people to give? Is it one time? Is it monthly giving? Is it setting up some sort of scheduled volunteer opportunity if that is your big need? Is it a timed advocacy program. If you're out doing um, advocacy work at the state or federal level, um, how can people get involved in that way? There are so many ways to think about generosity. Um, and also, we've talked a lot about like nonprofits. I see Brian from the DDA on here wanted to flag that many people give to individuals and unregistered groups too, right? So um, even though we as the nonprofit, nonprofit sector think, oh, generosity, it's exclusive to the nonprofit sector. Um, it's not. So I think of something like the Marquette Farmers Market. Um, I actually think of them as one of my favorite causes, even though they're not a nonprofit. In Giving Tuesday's world, we call them an unregistered group because they're not a 501c3. Um, and I, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna pull up my slide and read you guys actual, I'm doing a presentation, like I said, later this afternoon in Wichita. Um, I'm going to read you all the percentages because it really, it really blew my mind. But then it got me thinking about um, kind of how, especially in rural communities, we do give directly to people. Like we've all been to a spaghetti dinner for someone that's in need of help. Um, and we all have given to the kids who are out fundraising for their school field trip, right? Not a 501c3, just an unregistered group. Okay. So we've got 21% um, of rural donors give to registered organizations only, 11% give to unregistered groups only, 11% give in to individuals only. Then when we look at overlap, 7% give to registered and unregistered, 9% give to unregistered groups and individuals, 
11% give to registered organizations and individuals. And here's the mind blowing one, 30% give to all three. So when we think about like how humans are generous, they are looking for solutions. And sometimes those solutions aren't in the sector. So thinking about um, how you're telling the story of your need, starting out with, hi, we're a 501c3 nonprofit and we address. Maybe maybe not the best messaging, even though I feel like that's something that we often do in the sector. And instead, um, Liz, I'm going to pick on you. I haven't seen you in so long. It's great to see you. Um, I'm going to talk about your pantry program. Um, maybe Liz's story is our pantry has been available to community members for the last 10 years. And this is Anthony, and he has been a volunteer for all 10 years. And here's why he volunteers at our pantry. And that is the storytelling that gets people excited and engaged and wanting to become a volunteer. Or um, this is Sarah, and she has been a recurring donor for the last two years. She's given $15 every month for the last two years. That's two Starbucks coffees at Starbucks current price that she is giving up to give to our organization instead. And while $15 doesn't seem like a lot each month, um, in reality, collectively, that is this much money and it has had this amount of impact. So thinking about instead of just saying, you know, this is what we address, really sharing the stories of people who are involved and why they care about what you're doing. Um, Taylor, I feel like I've kind of gone off the agenda, so feel free to rein me back in. Um, but that's one of my favorite things to really think through is there are, um, there are a variety of ways that humans just are inherently generous. And the nonprofit sector is a lovely vessel for that generosity, um, but there are other vessels too. And so we want our vessel to feel um, accessible to everyone. So a lot of the things I'm hearing at this community foundation event that I'm at is like, to start an endowment with us, it's $25,000. That's not accessible to most of us, right? Like we're not going to on Giving Tuesday show up with $25,000 to start an endowment. But we, we might all have $25. And when we pool that $25 together, um, it can be a lot of money. Awesome. All right, Taylor, do you want to talk a little bit about how Give906 kind of pools things together collectively for people to find out about what's happening in the UP? Oh, you're muted. All right. I'm going to check in just with the group real quick. Give me a thumbs up if you feel like we answered what Giving Tuesday is, what the movement is. Okay. Anybody else? Give me a thumbs up. Just like this is this is this is good. This works. Okay. Do you understand what distributed leadership is? Vic, can you just give like a quick synopsis about what distributed like directly? What yeah. That from the one to the many is the simplest way that we've summed it up. So from your from our one organization to the many community leaders, from the many community leaders to the many groups and individuals they're working with from those groups and individuals to their own network. And that is kind of how the movement has grown over time. So I think like, just to like give you a, an example of that is that technically I'm a volunteer for giving Tuesday, right? So like they encourage me, they have all sorts of resources to build um, my leadership skills and my Giving Tuesday approach and all sorts of things. And then I kind of distribute that out to all of you and to the community in the UP to be able to also do that. And so they have like their hired paid staff, but they're using volunteers to keep the movement moving forward. Does that make sense? Thumbs up. I should mention the unbranded nature too. Like these volunteers like Taylor, how we have Give 906, which really feels close to the Upper Peninsula. Um, they're making it their own brand too because Giving Tuesday feels really big. And that's really why we started Give 906. Gosh, it was like 2017 or 2018 was because the nonprofit community came together and said, we feel like all the big national causes are getting the attention on Giving Tuesday here locally. How do we change that narrative? And so Give 906 started because 
um, 906, obviously, as the area code for the entire Upper Peninsula, is something that people who have lived, live or have lived in the Upper Peninsula still feel an affinity for. And you hear 906, you're from the UP, you know, it's it's the Upper Peninsula. Um, so that's, I think, the other piece of distributed leadership and how it works is that we provide a whole lot of tools and no rules. So everyone's logo looks different. Um, everyone's approach to Giving Tuesday looks different, but we're not here to say, you need to use the blue that you see in my background. You need to use the specific red in the heart. Um, you, can, you can really take what you're doing um, and make it your own using the power that you have um, and the agency that you have to address the needs of your community. So it's Giving Tuesday providing all of these tools um, without the rules that like, I'm trying to think of something that would be a little more restrictive. <sighs> like if you were to purchase a McDonald's franchise, right? Like there are a lot of McDonald's franchisees around, but that's a lot more of like, McDonald's tells you this is the sign that you I'm going to give her a second to see if it... she's been freezing. She's at a hotel. All right. Uh, Liz, did you have a specific question? Again, I thought I understood distributive leadership, but now I'm not so sure. I okay. see that you shared this quote, yeah. but what is a, a, a simple one sentence that says this is distributive leadership? Yeah, so distributive leadership is you like growing the organization based on grassroots. So multiple people coming into the organization to collaborate. So Vic is working to create community leaders out in the U.S. and in Canada. So I'm a community leader in the UP. So I work for, I'm a volunteer for Giving Tuesday, and then I am trained, and then I teach and bring it to Give 906 and to the UP region and train and teach others to move, to keep moving the movement forward. Okay. So it doesn't have anything to do with how I apply distributive leadership, uh, apply giving Tuesday in my own organization. It, I mean, what do you mean by that? <laughs> you just use two examples on a larger scale on a yeah. community wide scale, rather than a specific organization. I'm talking about my organization. Does yeah. distributive leadership apply in the context of Giving Tuesday? Does distributive leadership apply to my organization? Yes, because I'm going to tell you um, okay. also apologies. So Thanks, my dog Vicky. is very sick. Um, so everyone that knows Echo, please send him the vibes. Um, and my vet just texted me a one minute video of him. He's under supervision right now, but he's outside and doing really well. Um, and that totally cut off my Wi-Fi. So apologies. Um, but so Liz, one of the things that is most effective on Giving Tuesday is actually having other people make the ask on your behalf. Got um, it. And so that's distributing where the comes in. So distributing the power, your power to people who care about what you're doing and empowering them to talk about why they love the brick. Thank you. Yep. That is more clear now. Yeah. And it's it's hard yeah. because you're you're in a region that doesn't have a Taylor and Amy that's someday, Liz, someday. It's my dream that every community has um someone helping to bring Giving Tuesday more local. But until then, I think that's the best way that individual nonprofits can use it is um essentially like an ambassador program where you're encouraging people who love what you're doing to talk about it and make the ask on your behalf. Yep. And so the ask doesn't just have to be financial. Right. But voice, sharing the story, in kind. I'm missing one. There's four, right, Vic? Uh, five. Five. Testimony. Testimony. Ties. Okay. 
to like their network. If you have someone who maybe um, isn't able to give, but you know, they're like a member of the local Rotary, can they bring you into the Rotary meeting and have you talk on Giving Tuesday? How can they use their ties in the community to help get you out and in front of people, which is a little different than testimony, which is more them sharing individually why they care about what you're doing. Awesome. Thank you. So what are the five then, Victoria? Time, items, money, testimony, and ties. Testimony, ties, time, items. Oh, and money. Money, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Anybody else have any questions? I want to just keep it open. All right. So Give906 um, has the opportunity to always keep growing and moving forward. And um, there can be lots of new ideas and fresh ideas. And um, I'm totally willing to hear those and want more people involved in Give906 more on like a daily, weekly, monthly um, way. And I am working on creating that space. And this was kind of the start of that, like to make sure that you guys knew what Giving Tuesday is, what kind of a movement it is, what the mission and vision of Giving Tuesday is from um, a worldwide view, since it is a um, international worldwide in, um, organization and movement. And so that was one of our goals and outcomes for today, just to know like from top, top down how that works and that it's not lack of a better term, top down, that's not my favorite, but um, just so that you can understand how that is kind of working. And so Give906 is um, a great spot for all of you. And Liz, you are more than welcome to participate in Give906 if you'd like. We um, call it the one-stop shop for um, all donors. And we create the Give906.org website so that we will um, put all of your organizations on one, one website. And so then when you click on your organization, it goes to your giving page and goes directly to your organization. And I, I know Vic is probably going to be like, oh, that again. But um, I often call myself like a hospitality leader because like, I'm just trying to host and hold um, your organizations and try to get it out to the community and share with the UP um, what you guys are doing and what your organizations are doing and what your story is. And it's a lot of, it's 60 organizations plus, I mean, it could be 200 or 300 probably. Um, but right now we're have six from previous 65 organizations previously registered at the one shop stop shop on give 906.org. And so we'd love for all of you to participate and register. So you're going to go to give 906.org to register your organization and fill out a some pretty simple form. The more information you give me, the more visuals you give me, all of the things is easier for me to tell your story. Um, and I'm really looking forward to be, being able to do that this year again. I am working with um, some community foundations on trying to get some um, matches set up. I'm hoping to have a pilot start this year in Menominee. And again, like you guys, each individual organization can go out into your community and do whatever you wish in order to make Giving Tuesday happen on your day. I am here to facilitate and to keep the marketing and communications to reach out to the media and our social media pages and to be able to communicate like, hey, look, today is a big day. How are you giving? What are you thinking? And a lot of times when I'm talking to people, um, they come to our page and they don't just stop at one place. Like they are like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know this was an organization. I didn't even know this story. And they start just going down the line and learning and educating themselves and give to multiple people and multiple organizations. And it's been a really, um, it's all anecdotal at this point. We're still working out, working out how to um, share our outcomes and, how to share the matrix and all of the numbers on this. But when we do hear it, it's 
it's a great way to leverage your organization and to also work and collaborate together by having your organization um, listed on the give906.org. So that is, we are continuing on with that work. Does anyone have any questions for me about that? Yeah, Terry. Two quick questions. Is there a cost to participate? There is not. Okay. Appreciate that. Um, I am uh, attending today on the basis of uh, a religious organization. Are there any uh, particular special considerations for um, churches, for instance? No. Nope. Last year, I visited the, a Lutheran church, and we do the exact same for what for churches that we do for any other nonprofit. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Last um, you, can I ask, sorry, go ahead. I had another question. Um, <laughs> what what exactly will you need? I mean, obviously the basic info, but do you want um, like graphics or some like kind of summary of our campaign that you can share out? Or what what do people typically provide yeah. you? Um, it's really awesome to have a few pictures to go with your organization to get a visual and to be able to share that with others. Um, it will prompt you to tell me like, what are you going to do for Giving Tuesday? What is your campaign look like? Um, how are you going to, like, what are your outcomes? How are you going to accomplish these goals and these different things? And then um, it will also prompt, like there's space that will say, to tell your story. So is there an example? Is there a story, an outcome in your organization that's really relevant right now, that stands out right now? Is it a story about an individual? Is it a story of collaboration with other organizations? Um, maybe you have some really great numbers that you, data that you want to throw in there. That's great too. And it will be, so it'll be like a website format where there's plenty of space to share some yeah, of that so we share we share um on the website it'll be your organization's name and a quick synopsis of what you are and what you do and then they will click on your organization and lead to your giving page i however um now i have macy's on the call she's uh taking notes for me and stuff and um macy johnson is also um works for grow and lead and she's going to be, she runs our social media and she'll be taking those pictures and those stories you've told and putting them on social media specifically. But it also gives me data when I go into the media to be like, you know, this organization is doing A, B, and C, and here's a really great testimonial that they shared with me, or here's a really great story that they shared that happened in their organization in the last year. Okay. So You'll have the basic info and then when we, they click on the giving page, that'll go to our site and what, how yeah. we've done it. And you'll just have all this other info, like sort of as your background, so you can use it as needed. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. And I did leave up the giving guide from last year to give you guys an example. And if you are looking again, please give me feedback, like send me an email. Uh, Macy, can you throw my email in the, in the comments, in the chat? Um, send me an email and said, make some suggestions. That would be great to have, hear feedback on what you think would be helpful. Um, but you can definitely see our giving page, which I did leave up so that you guys had an example. Eventually it will go down and I'll start putting the new one up. And there's a toolkit on give906.org and we're, con we're constantly updating that. This year we have a new plaid graphic, which we think is really fun. We also have stickers for it. Um, and so we're constantly updating that. And then there's the registration and you just click on that and answer our questions. Does that make sense? I feel like this is a lot of information of how to, I should make a video. Any questions? Thank you, Macy. My email is in the comments now. Okay, so we are gonna go to the how. So you're gonna register to be part of Give 906. And then um, does anyone right now currently have any plans for what they're going to be doing on Giving Tuesday? 
It's okay if you don't, don't panic. Cause my next number three on how is always takes the pressure off. All right. So if you don't have any plans, the idea that I think Giving Tuesday shares a lot is to just do something. So maybe this year it's just bringing awareness to it on your social media pages. Maybe it's sending out a couple mass emails and saying, this is Give like this is Give 906. This is what we're doing. This is how we're doing it. It's a much bigger regional thing, but also this is what our organization is doing. Um, that can go a long way, just in donations alone. And then people have your information to share when like Giving Tuesday has a big buzz. And so people are talking about it on Giving Tuesday. It's on the news. It's on all over social media. And so people are talking about it. And if they have read your email or read your, your social um, post, seen a video, they're going to be able to share that. And you're going to have advocates in your community. Um, so just do something, a mass email, some social media posts, um, just sign up, register for give 906 and just see what happens. Um, and so that's, that's just do something. Um, and it'll get you started and excited. I promise it will get you excited, uh, for the next year to start planning. All right. Vic, I love to just do something Taylor. Um, one of the things that we do caution people with is if that one, if that something is posting your link one time on social media, um, that's probably not going to be super effective. So having a little bit of a cadence, maybe email instead of um, social media, we just never know how the algorithm is going to work. And um, last year, Facebook's giving platform actually went down in the middle of Giving Tuesday for like a, a solid six hours. So we really encourage people to use things that are, are theirs, like their own giving page um, or, or a, a giving platform that um, exists out there and not rely on some of the some of the more popular, but not necessarily things that you can control where and how people see it um, as your only means of getting the word out. Um, if you do a mailing, timing it so that people get it around Giving Tuesday because they're thinking about giving. Um, if that's a big way that you kick off your end of year giving, that could be that could be what you do for Giving Tuesday this year is change your timing of it. So it aligns more with when giving season kicks off and people are um, are getting ready and gearing up to give. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's a really great point about the or the organic posts that we are always trying to make viral or get a lot of traction it's not working how it used to. And so if you are going to post one thing, it should be a video. Vic and I just learned this. No, I mean, we probably knew it. I was in denial <laughs> about it. Um, but creating like a video, even if it's a 15 second video, um, and that could be helpful. And LinkedIn is also one of the most organic yeah. places to be posting. So if you just make a post, that's the best organic place where you'll get more traction. Um, is that there's a third one? Do you know what the third one is, or is it video? Um, Instagram, Instagram Reels and TikTok. Now, the thing I've learned, I don't TikTok, guys. I'm old now, um, but I did learn that TikTok virality and their algorithm is a lot less in real time than Instagram reels. So you might do your giving Tuesday post on giving Tuesday, but people won't see it until March on TikTok. I know it's really, it's not the ideal place for like gearing up for a specific date because it, it recycles content throughout, like throughout its algorithm. Instagram reels tends to be a little more chronological and people will see what you post close to the date that you post it. Um, so that was one of the, the tidbits when you think about which platforms you're going to be on. Um, and the tip was basically like face, how did he put it, Taylor face first video. So like literally holding your phone up and being like, Hey, I'm talking to you. This is awesome. Go giving Tuesday. And like, that's your video. Those are the ones that do the best currently across the social media platforms. Um, I know they're awkward. I know they're not fun to make, 
But that's where um, I mentioned when Liz asked the question about distributed leadership, you can ask your volunteers to do that. You can ask your board to do that. You can ask your donors to do that. Depending on what type of organization you are, you can ask the people receiving your services if that's something that you're comfortable sharing. Um, you can ask them to tell their story. Um, I see Megan from the Health Foundation here, like having the grantees share the impact that Superior Health Foundation's investment in them has made could be a super great video series in the lead up to Giving Tuesday. Um, we also see there's a halo effect. And I like joke that it's my mom. Um, so when we look at age and awareness, um, we see young people are really aware uh, of Giving Tuesday in the lead up. Um, up to about Gen X, starting with later Gen X into boomers, much more aware about Giving Tuesday the days after. And um, I joke that it's my mom who has no social media, um, uses like her charter.mi email that she got 27 years ago and has signed up for nothing um, and still gets the Sue Evening News. <laughs> um, she finds out about Giving Tuesday when nine and 10 news does their segment on it at 6 p.m. So the day of giving Tuesday, 6 p.m., she's like, it's giving Tuesday. That's so cool. Like I should do something. And then she's going to get out her little checkbook because she's not going to use her credit card online. And she's going to write out checks, but it's 6 p.m. So she can't give it on giving Tuesday. She's going to put them in the mail or drop them off later in the week. So we do see that like giving absolutely peaks on giving Tuesday but it ramps up right around Thanksgiving and it starts ramping down and it gets back to baseline the Friday after giving Tuesday. So it's really a full week with it peaking on Tuesday. So when you think about kind of when you're launching, what you're sharing, um, it doesn't have to be just the day of giving Tuesday that you're talking about it. You can start talking about it early and like wrap it up a little afterwards. And we keep give906.org in the giving guide up all season. We keep it up through January and then we'll pop it back up for people to see it again later in the year too, just in case get some more traction. All right. I see Liz has a hand up. What's oh. up, Liz? Yeah, I was wondering, you say launch it before, or you said a little before. Do you mean a month before, a week before? I think you, you can launch it whenever you want, but you won't see traction until around Thanksgiving. Okay, so maybe it's taking off. Yep. Start in early Thanksgiving week? Yeah. Okay. I mean, because why would I want to start it in early November? Right. It's Unless there's something like, is November Hunger, Hunger Awareness Month? Like if there was another moment that you could yeah. take advantage of, right? Sure. That like, oh, here's why we're launching it in early November because this whole month is dedicated to what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can leverage other moments too. And that's something that I encourage people to think about is like what moments throughout the year can you re-engage the people that um, you got connected with on Giving Tuesday? Because if you know that there's someone – that did something on Giving Tuesday, they probably feel that collectiveness and that's partially why they participated. So if you do have an awareness month, if you do have um, something like National Volunteer Week that you participate in, those other moments, this is a really great audience for them and getting them re-engaged and re-involved. So they become year round supporters, not just Giving Tuesday supporters because we know we need support year round, not just one day. And for give906.org, we need the information as soon as we can get it. We are like continually adding organizations onto the page up until, you know, the night before, but the more, the sooner you get your information and the sooner I see it, the more media focus I can give that organization. All right. Any more questions? Yeah, Terry. Uh, are there plans for um, give nine oh six uh, representatives to be interviewed, say by Channel Six or Channel Nineteen or through other media sources? 
Yeah. And I manage all of that. And we're, especially on the day of, I try to stay close to Marquette. Um, the rest of my te like team kind of goes out and visits all the other organizations as many as they can in the day. But I stay here and visit the Marquette locations and the surrounding area so that I can jump on the T on TV throughout the day in all the channels. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Uh, Liz, your hand is still up. Did you have another question? Okay. Sorry, I didn't know if it popped back up, you know? All right. Thank you everyone so much for joining. Um, my email is in the comments. It's in the chat section. Um, you know, I anything that wasn't answered or you were confused on or have more questions or sparked ideas, I can also set up an hour Zoom call or however you need to be able to talk and chat things out. If I don't know the answer, I, you know, I default back um, to Vic and I ask her questions and she doesn't know she goes to her team and we eventually find an answer and, or a solution. And so we're here to support you and help you and really grow and lead. We just want to build capacity for the organizations UP wide. And so we're here to show up for you and to host, um, giving Tuesday on our webpage and to be, to be what you need. And so please don't hesitate, send those emails. We'll book those calls and we'll do it together. Thanks for joining us. We love seeing all of you on Zoom. Um, and thanks for jumping on. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. That was super fun. It was fun. It's always, yeah, I never, always happy to help. yeah, I really appreciate it. I yeah. knew they were going to have lots of questions. I probably wouldn't be able to answer. So thanks for, I'm still learning. It's so all thanks. good. Liz did ask for the toolkit. I sent it directly to her, but, um, have you seen it yet? I don't think I've sent it out. Cause it's like, like is there an up, is it updated? There's a really slick update.